so students last time we were discussing about how to separate insoluble solids from liquids now here we will discuss how to separate the soluble solids from liquids and it's in page number 41 so the methods are evaporation and condensation so evaporation probably you have heard this term before also in your lower classes so basically evaporation is the process of converting liquid into its vapor form and uh, the liquids get converted to vapor from form through the evaporation only so evaporation is used to separate soluble solid uh, particles from a solution the dry solid particles are left behind when the liquid evaporates so when the liquid gets evaporated the dry solid particles which are uh, le uh, they left behind you know that sea water has now we already know that sea water has many salts dissolved in it including the common salt which we used to consume every day in our home in order to separate the salt from the sea water the sea water is stored in shallow ponds so here how to uh, get common salt is like we usually follow the process of evaporation and we take the uh, salt uh, in order to separate the salt the sea water is stored in shallow ponds the water evaporates due to the heat which it gets from sunlight and the salts are left behind the mixture of salt is again purified to get common salt now the water uh, that evaporates due to the heat from the sunlight now this mixture of salt is again purified now the left behind salt uh, the mixture of salt is again purified to get the common salt similarly when wet clothes are put out in the sunlight they dry by evaporation only now when we put the our wet clothes uh, to dry up it is evaporated the water from the clothes evaporated and left behind is our clothes which are dry now the next one is distillation the process by which a pure liquid is obtained from a solution by evaporating the liquid and then condensing the vapor is called distillation so the process in which a pure liquid is obtained here we will get a pure liquid from a solution by evaporating the liquid here also the liquid evaporates and then what happens we condense the vapors is called distillation now the condensing of vapors is termed as the distillation now in the process of distillation a solution is heated we take up a solution and we heat it till the solvent starts evaporating till the time we achieve when the solvent starts evaporating this vapor is collected and condensed to give back the pure solvent. Now this vapor is collected, it is subjected to condensation to give back our pure solvent which we are willing to get. The water obtained after distillation of water is called distilled water and this uh, is the water which we get after distillation is distilled water which is very much pure. Distilled water is used in the laboratory, in the car batteries also. It is used in laboratories, in car batteries, even in our inverter batteries, we used to put distilled water. Method of separating liquid-liquid mixture. Now comes the methods to how to separate the liquid-liquid mixture. Now, liquids that do not mix with each other are called as immiscible liquids. Now, there are certain liquids which do not mix with each other. Like in your home also, you can try, you can uh, take some oil and water and try to mix that. You will see that layers of oil will be floating uh, above the water. But these two liquids are not getting mixed with each other. Now, these type of liquids are called as immiscible liquids which do not completely mix with each other. Now, these uh, are separated through separating funnel. A separating funnel is used for the separation of immiscible liquids. A separating funnel is a special flask. Now it is a special flask that is which is narrow at the bottom and it is open at the top. It has a stop cock at the bottom and it also has a stop cock which is there uh, present there at the bottom. The mixture of immiscible liquid is filled in the separating funnel placed on a stand. It is uh, subjected to stand with a 
fun uh, with the stand on it and uh, the mixture of immiscible liquid is filled in the separating funnel here you can see this mixture is filled in the separating funnel okay so it is allowed to stand for some time uh, until distinctive layers are formed now it is allowed to stand for some time and after that you will achieve that two distinctive layer is formed here it is water here it is oil so these two are distinctive layers the lighter liquid floats on the top the oil is lighter so it is floating on the top and the heavier liquid that is water is settled at the bottom here you can see it clearly now the stopcock is open to remove the layer at the bottom now the stopcock this is the stopcock you uh, we will open it and we will separate the water from this separating funnel uh, when the bottom layer has been entirely removed from, uh, from the funnel, the stopcock is closed. Now after that, the stopcock is closed. Thus, two uh, liquids are separated. Now with this, these two layers are separated. These two liquids are separated. Now the next topic is solubility of substance. The solubility of a substance is the maximum amount of substance. Now, we'll first try to understand what is the solubility of substance. Now, the solubility of a substance is the maximum amount of a substance that will dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a certain temperature. Now, if in a certain temperature, a given amount of solvent is there and the maximum amount of a solid or the maximum amount of a substance which you can dissolve in that mixture is called the solubility of substances like keep adding sugar to water in a beaker and stir till no more sugar can dissolve in it now we can try it by adding by keep adding the sugar to water in a beaker and stir till the time a sugar can dissolve in it completely we now have a saturated solution of sugar in water now after that you will get a saturated solution of water in which no more amount of sugar you can dissolve because you can see that in uh, that particular solvent uh, it is not dissolving more sugar okay so that is uh, that is the time which we can observe that no more sugar can be added and it is the saturation point a saturated solution is one in which no more solute can be dissolved so that will become a saturated solution as in that time no more solute in that solvent also no more solute can be dissolved however if we now heat the solution but now if we start heating the solution and stirring it we will observe that more sugar can be dissolved thus the solubility of sugar in water increases with temperature but now then if we start heating the solution then we can add more sugar to it thus the solubility of sugar in water increases with temperature so it will increase with temperature using more than one method to separate substances now sometimes uh, one method is not enough to separate or to get the pure uh, substance or to get the pure solution so more than one methods are used more than uh, to separate the substances some mixtures can be separated using only one method like for example a mixture of sand and sugar or sand and salt needs more than one method so uh, some mixtures cannot be separated using only one method so there are certain mixtures which cannot be separated using only one method for example a mixture of sand and sugar or sand and salt need more than one method to separate these components stir the mixture in water to, so to separate these type of components we have to stir the mixture in water the sand will not dissolve and so can be separated by filtration so now if in this type of solution if we start stirring the mixture the sand obviously will not dissolve and so can be uh, separated by filtration the dissolved salt or sugar can be isolated by evaporation now the first we used is filtration now the next dissolved salt or sugar can be isolated by evaporation so here we use two methods to separate these type of solutions now the last topic of this chapter is purification of water in water works now the purification of water is very much required otherwise we won't get a safe water to 
drink or a drinkable water purification is very much needed so water is essential to our lives obviously water is do essential to our lives the water that is supplied to us through taps is purified by using various methods of separation now which we get the water supply which we get in our homes are purified through various methods of separation the process used include sedimentation decantation loading filtration and chlorination also now these all methods you have already studied i have already discussed now here comes one addition is chlorination so large particles of solid impurities are first removed by sedimentation and decantation so these large particles obviously are removed by sedimentation and decantation then alum is then added to water to settle the smaller particles by loading now loading is also done so that alum can attract the dirt particles with it and they will settle down in the solution the clear water obtained is filtered now the clear water is then filtered by passing it through sand filters through sand filters we can set up sand filters and then the water is passed through it and it is filtered germs are killed by chlorination so the work of chlorination is to kill the germs while chlorine is added to the water now the chlorine what it does it uh, kills the germs present in the water making it uh, drinkable by us where chlorine is added to the water and it kills the all the germs which is present in the water now with this our chapter is finished i hope you got a clear idea about this chapter and surely check out the question answers which is there in the app thank you